Rainbow Reflections, Book One, A Kind of Magic, Chapter Three, Liar. Sorala glanced towards the open door as two people shuffled in. Her golden eyes narrowed over her hooked nose, and she appeared hawk-like as she stared them down. Had they been outside the admin office the whole time? Why were they suddenly coming in? These are my children, the school founder told Sorala calmly, sitting across from her at a wide desk. The first person had brown skin and spiky orange hair. Their eyes were mismatched and did not complement the bright orange robe they were wearing. In fact, none of what they were wearing seemed to go together. The stripy gray shirt with the heavily patterned robe and the baggy red pants, it was all a big clash. This person did not look anything like the teacher behind the desk or the person beside them. The second person had thick purple hair, rectangular glasses, and angular eyes. They looked more like the school founder, though there were notable differences. Their freckled face was pretty, and Sorella did not think that of too many people. They are both orphans I took in, the teacher went on, rubbing his thumb and pointer finger over one of his long mustache strands. Sorella flicked her gaze to him. And, she grumbled, just because I said I lived alone doesn't mean I'm an orphan. But you and I both know that you are, he said simply. Who do you even think you are, claiming to know who I am after barely meeting me? Sarala hissed. I told you, he said patiently. I am Hyaktu Saihan, the founder of the school and the father of two orphan children. I've been around the world. I've met all sorts of people. I know you're an orphan, or a runaway child. I'm not a child, Sarala protested crossly. Hyaktu smiled at her. But you are an orphan. She huffed impatiently and slumped back in her chair. Staring down at her dirty brown pants underneath her tattered yellow robe, she could feel the twigs poking into her tanned skin and the small bits of leaves in her dark brown hair. It was no wonder Hyaktu saw right through her. What else was he supposed to think when a dirty teenager emerged from the thick forest, clearly lost for months, or years? Why did you come to the school? Hyaktu pressed after a moment of silence. Sarala didn't answer. If you've been living in the wild and know how to get by on your own, then you've had no need to come to civilization for something like food or water, surely, Hyaktu continued. Not to mention, the lands here are bountiful in fruits, vegetables, and rivers. Sorala clenched her jaw and made no reply. I will ask only once more, Hyaktu said, his features hardening a bit as he leaned closer. Why did you come to the school? She took a deep breath, then queried, what school is this? Hyaktu frowned. The Saihan Academy of Magic. Sarala searched her memory. It sounded familiar, but it wasn't exact. Can you write it down? Hyaktu continued frowning at her, but did as she asked. He scrawled several words across a piece of paper in front of him and handed it to her. Sarala read the words with a bit of difficulty. She wasn't the best when it came to reading or writing. Kahan, she said triumphantly, tapping the paper. No, it's Saihan, Hyaktu pointed out. It's a Salian. I've always read it as Kahan, she explained. It's not like I had anyone to tell me how to pronounce it. Not when I got that pamphlet. Not when I was abandoned. Hyaktu nodded his understanding. So you are familiar with my school. You are actively searching for it? Sarala clenched her jaw again. She didn't know how to respond to that. Of course, she had heard of the Academy, and she had indeed been looking for it over the past few months or year. She took a deep breath, then let it go and nodded. Why? Hyaktu pressed. Can't you just leave me be, Aktu? She snapped, a knot twisting in her stomach as red flashed through her mind. Hyaktu looked a bit annoyed at this. Hyaktu. It's pronounced with a sharp hyak sound. She shrugged. Sorry. He stared at her through his bright violet eyes, searching her for a long moment. I prefer to know who my students are before taking them in, but I see you are determined to learn if you've been searching for my school, so I will let you stay. She stared at him. It's what you want, is it not? A magical education? It's why you came all this way? Sorala nodded once. Then you will have it, he said simply. But I'm... She clenched her jaw. I don't have any money. You don't need to have money, Hyaktu told her quietly, but I'd prefer if you didn't scream about it to the other students that you got in for free. 
While magical high schools aren't as expensive as magical universities, it's still not cheap. If you really want to be here, you must agree not to tell any other students. Ren and Zinovus, my daughters, are the only exceptions. Sorella nodded again. Hyaktu smiled. Well then, if you agree to not tell others how you got in, I will admit you to the school. Of course, Sorella said at once. Good, very good, Hyaktu said with a nod. I'll just need you to fill out some paperwork. It's the standard forms all students have to fill out, he added when seeing Sorala grow tense. Fine, she uttered. Hyaktu grabbed the mirror that was lying flat on the desk in front of him, tapped its glass-like surface, and it no longer reflected the ceiling. It showed a screen with different buttons. He pressed on one, and it opened up to what looked like a document. To move things along quicker, I'll just fill it out for you, Hyaktu told her, tapping on a box. I do need your signature at the bottom afterwards. Now, what is your full name? Sorala's heartbeat quickened. If I give my full name, they could track me down, couldn't they? They could return me to that orphanage. What if this is all just a trap to send me back? I'll just have to make it up. Sorala Kiran, she said, hoping they wouldn't notice the small hesitation. Hyaktu nodded and tapped a keyboard on the mirror's screen. Birthday? Do you know your birthday? Um, April 6. Yes, April 6. The year? Um, 39. So you're 15, Hyaktu said, adding that in the form. He continued through the document, only pausing to have Sorala demonstrate she had magical ability. When she said she had earth magic, he handed her a stone from his rope pocket and told her to prove it. She smashed the stone in her hands, making it crumble to dust. Hyaktu added that to the form and pressed on until they were done. When it came to the section on family history, Hyaktu wrote that Sorala had a rich uncle from Idis who passed away and left all of his money to Sorala, his only known relative. He left her enough money to pay for her magical education. I just need you to sign here, Hyaktu told her, turning the mirror and pointing at the bottom of the document. And there's no magic attached to this signature? She asked hesitantly. Hyaktu shook his head. After a long moment, Sorala used her finger to scribble in the box on the screen. Hyaktu then swiveled the mirror back around, Sorala able to feel a light breeze as he moved. You're almost all set up, he told her. We just need to take a photo of you for your ID card and give you a key to your new room. A photo? Sorala questioned. She felt her dirty face and frowned. Can I at least get cleaned up? Of course, Hyaktu replied. Ren, Zin, you two help Sorala, then bring her back here for the photo. Sorala turned to face the two teenagers. They looked to be about a year younger than her, though they all stood at about the same height. She got to her feet and approached the sisters slowly, eyeing them warily. Which one is which? Sorala wondered. But the orange-haired twin, wearing the patterned robe, quickly thrust her hand out and exclaimed, Hi, I'm Zin! Sorala stared at her for a long moment. That was easy. So Zin is the one with the crazy robe. And the letter Z is in the word crazy, plus a crazy letter in general, right? So Zin is the crazy one. Hopefully I don't get their names mixed up now. Ren glanced at her sister, her mouth twitching like she was about to speak, before settling back into an amused smirk. Zin lowered her hand with a small chuckle. Sorala raised an eyebrow, wondering if she had missed something. Come on, Sorala. Ren said, once the odd exchange seemed to be over. Ren twirled on the spot and led the way from the room. Zin motioned for Sorala to follow, then took up the rear. Ren brought them to a long room of beds and cabinets, the scent of mint strong. They then went through another door, stepping into the warm outdoor air. A pond shimmered in front of her, and a garden lay several meters beyond. Sorala stared up at the three tan walls around her, feeling suddenly trapped between the stone structures. There were four towers, one in each corner of the wide square courtyard. Heart beating rapidly, she almost missed Ren's words. The bathroom is right there, Ren said, pointing to her right. Sorala shook herself from her stupor, then nodded and entered the small building with Ren at her heel. The bathroom looked like a hut against the southeastern tower and eastern building. As soon as she walked through the door, the light flickered on. She stared up at the metal rods, which were filled with fire magic and enchanted to shine light when movement was detected. Sorala only knew this because of her experience breaking into shops to steal food during closed hours. 
She moved to the mirror against one wall, taking in her reflection. She was dirty. There was no other way to put it. Next to Ren, she looked like the ugliest person to exist. Bits of twigs and leaves clung to her robe and hair. She pulled these out as best as she could, but her hair was still a tangled mess. Whatever, she muttered. Here, let me try, Ren said. She leaned forward and took the twigs out of Sorala's hair. Her hands were so gentle against Sorala's scalp, and she soon found her eyes half-closing in relaxation. She missed the feeling of fingers running through her hair. I think I got most of them, Ren said a few minutes later, stepping back to observe the back of Sorala's head. It looks much better. It's fine if you didn't get it all, Sorala said simply. It feels better anyway. She turned the sink on and splashed cool water over her face, removing the dirt and sweat after a few rough scrubs. Ren handed her a bamboo paper towel from a roll hanging on the wall, and she wiped the remaining water off. That'll have to do, she muttered. We'll get you more cleaned up later, but you're definitely photo-worthy, Ren said, beaming at her. Sorella shrugged in response, then led the way from the bathroom. Zin stood outside, clearly bored as she tapped her foot impatiently against the cobblestone ground. Took you long enough, she said, rolling her eyes. Come on! Zin led the way back to the admin office, practically running. Hyaktu waited for them to re-enter, still holding the square-shaped mirror at the ready. Stand against that wall, Hyaktu told Sorala, signaling to a blank spot of the yellow wall near the door. Sorala did as he told her, and he lifted the mirror to be level with his face. After a few seconds, he nodded that he was done, then returned to his desk. Another silent minute passed as he tapped a few more things, then there was a rumbling noise. Sorala searched the room, her heartbeat quickening once more. But she had no need to worry. It was just her ID card printing out. Hyaktu picked up the card from a small bin, where it had landed underneath the rumbling machine on a back desk. He handed it to Sorala. It was made of bamboo and had her picture on the surface. Her name, date of birth, pronouns, and elemental magic were listed on it. This ID card is used to check out books from the library, Hyaktu told her. But you can also use it outside the school. It gives you an official identity, so nobody will question your background. Well, they can of course question your past, but to be enrolled in a magic academy shows that your family had enough money to send you. So nobody should assume you're an orphan who couldn't afford to go to school. Sorella's jaw clenched. That wasn't true. There were many orphans whose parents left them lots of money, enough to give them a magical education just like her supposed uncle had. The orphanage she'd been at also held many fundraising programs for the specific purpose of sending orphans to school if they never gained a family. Sorala would have had the same opportunity, if she had stuck around. This is your room key, Hyaktu went on, passing her a rigid key. Student rooms are located on the second, third, and fourth floors of the western, eastern, and northern buildings. I will show you where your room is. Sorala stared up at Hyaktu for a long moment. Why are you doing all of this for me? Hyaktu smiled at her. Why would I not? He merely questioned in response. She frowned. But why let me in for free? I thought I'd at least have to test or prove my worth or... You are worthy, Hyaktu said simply. Just then, a loud noise came from the printer in the corner of the room. Hyaktu glanced over at it and rolled his eyes. That thing always breaks down, he muttered. You should get a new one, Zin piped up. That is a new one, and it's already suffered after issuing two ID cards, Hyaktu sighed, then turned back to Sorala with a smile. Printers are a bit ridiculous. Sorala merely stared at him. Hyaktu put a hand on her shoulder and led her from the stuffy room, the twins following a bit hesitantly. Well, Sorala Kiron, you are officially a student of the Saihan Academy of Magic. School will start very soon, and you'll be able to learn all the magic you want. This is your home now. Sorala's eyes glazed over, and her breath seemed to stop. Home, she thought tonelessly. My home now.